You guys, look, do you notice the energy change in this room? <laughs> the energy change, really. We were all a team, and then I said someone's going to teach. <laughs> we're on separate teams now. We're on the same team. Okay. You guys don't like my jokes today. All right, motor neuron. Oh, that's my hard wire. That's my cable to the lamp, right? It's going to this frog toe called a synaptic, synaptic knob. Inside the synaptic knob, I have bubbles, vesicles. What's inside that? Acetylcholine. I'd recommend you say acetylcholine out loud in your dorm room. Just don't say it in the mirror three times at midnight. You don't want to know what happens. But then you have, what do you have on this axon? I got the sodium voltage gated channel, potassium voltage gated channel. At the synaptic knob, I have lots of calcium voltage gated uh, channels. Positive on the outside, negative on the inside, negative 90 millivolts at my sarcolemma. There's two ohms there. Then I have this gap, which is called the synaptic, what's it called? Cleft, right? But you do hear that cliff a little bit, right? Good. Then I have a sodium ligand gated channel, sodium ligand channel. How many? Two? No, many. And that's at the motor and what is, ooh, that's a good place to label that. Really good place to label that. I'm glad I did that by mistake. All right, this is my myocyte. Oh, I might as well label everything else. There's my Z line to Z line. There's my rope called tropomyosin. The knot is called troponin because it's a shorter word. Inside the terminal cisternae, I got lots of calcium. The hounds want me to get out. It's terminal cisternae, the cavern. And that terminal cisternae is part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Over here, I got a T tubule, and I have some myosin heads right there. The thin is actin, the thick is myosin. This zone right here is the A zone. This is the A band. This is the I band. This over here is the sodium voltage gated channel, and this is the potassium voltage gated channel. Did I miss anything? I think I am good. Oh, the chemical. What's this chemical called? Acetylcholine. Who's hiding in the shadows? Acetylcholine esterase. So it's A-C-H-E. You can almost take that E and kind of make a broom out of it. And what does acetylcholine esterase like to do? Sweep, sweep the gap and clean right there. All right, so I want to tase my bicep brachii muscle. So here comes my action potential. I start the stimulus. So at each segment, I hit negative 55, open up the door. I want that. Sodium rushes in, then you kendama. You get to plus 30, you open this door. Potassium looks out. I want that. Potassium gets kicked out. Everybody, what do I call that? Action potential. So you flip flop, flip flop, flip flop until bam, you get the calcium voltage gated channel. What's the number? Negative 40. You don't need to know that, but now you guys know it. You just use that brain cell. Okay, negative 40. It's going to open up. Calcium looks in. I want that. Calcium rushes in. It sees all the bums. What's it tell the bums to do? Get out. Oh man, you guys are starting to roll. You get out. And just like lemmings jumping off the cliff, you put the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft, and it's going to diffuse across. That is your T, your ligand. It goes into this receptor called the cholinergic receptor. You should say that out loud as well later on. And it goes in there, acetylcholine goes in, and it opens up this gate. Sodium looks in, I want that. I kind of want that. I'm going to meander in because I kind of like that. So it meanders in slowly and you start to add plus charges in here. Negative 90 becomes more positive. You hit negative 70, what happens? Nothing. <clears throat> then you hit negative 56, <clears throat> what happens? Nothing. Then you hit negative 55, what happens? <clears throat> you got this area to hit threshold for this gate. Sodium door opens up, sodium, I want that. It rushes in, plus 30, kendama. This door opens up, potassium gets kicked out. What do I call this? 
extra potential. And you flip flop, flip flop, zoom, zoom, down a T tubule. The birds are coming, the birds are coming. Release the hounds. The calcium gets released. Grab the troponin, pulls the rope. Myosin binding sites are exposed. You add ATP, disconnect, hydrolyze it, drop the B, drop the ADP, add a new ATP, disconnect, hydrolyze it, drop the B, drop the ADP. What happens to your sarcomere? It starts to come in. That's the sliding filament theory. What happens to your eight zone? It can go away. What happens to your A band? It stays the same. What happens to your I band? It gets smaller. What happens to your muscle belt? It gets shorter. You're doing work. Then out of the shadows, acetylcholine esterase comes in and says, uh, 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 clean, clean, clean. What happens to your ligand gated channels? They close. What happens to your action potential? It stops. What happens to your hounds? You put them back in the pen and you take the calcium away. What happens to your rope? It turns back. What happens to your myosin heads? It gets kicked off because the rope. What happens to your sarcomere? It relaxes. How do I keep the contraction going? More action potentials, more keys, release the hounds, and you can do more contraction. All right, raise your hand if you're about 70. I think we're at this point, a 75% or above. It's a C, pretty good with this. 